Hello everyone. Welcome to Kickstart Privacy. Ashik this side. Today we are going to dive deep into exploring two essential concepts that impact everything from our personal privacy to how global businesses operate. Data sovereignty and data localization. In simple terms, we are discussing who controls our digital data and where it is stored ever wondered if your personal data stays in your country or if it travels overseas that's what i'm here to unpack let's get started introduction in today's digital world, how countries manage and control data is a big topic, right? Two key terms are data sovereignty and data localization. Data sovereignty means that data flows follows the laws of the country it comes from. Data localization means that data must be stored in the country where it was created. Both ideas are about making sure data is safe, private and under the right control. All right. Let's move on to see uh, the today's topic cover. What is data sovereignty? What is data localization? Have examples, key takeaways, conclusion, and let's see why countries you know very much concerns over their data residency. Let's move on. Now, what is data sovereignty? Data sovereignty refers to a Countries' legal and regulatory control over the data that is generated within its own borders. This means that a country has the right to regulate how personal data is collected, processed, and stored within its own jurisdiction. But when it comes to the transfer of personal data, Data sovereignty means that a country has the right to regulate the cross-border transfer of personal data to ensure that it is handled in accordance with the country's laws and regulations. All right. Now let's see what is data localization. What is data localization? Data localization, on the other hand, is a specific policy or a requirement that mandates that personal data must be stored or processed within a specific country's borders. In other words, data localization is a subset of data sovereignty that focuses on where personal data is physically located. All right. So let's talk about one example here. To give an example, let's say that a company based in the United States collects personal data from customers in the European Union. So the European Union has a strong data protection law right everybody aware of that it's a gdpr that require companies to obtain user consent before transferring personal data outside of the eu so this is an example of data sovereignty as the eu is regulating the cross border transfer of personal data and in the case of data localization if the EU also has a data localization requirement that mandates that personal data of EU citizens must be stored on servers located within the EU, then the company in the US would need to ensure that it is complying with this requirement as well. This is an example of data localization. 
as it is regulating where the personal data is physically located right overall data sovereignty and uh, data localization are related concepts but data localization is a specific policy or requirement that is implemented in order to enforce data sovereignty all right now why countries are increasingly concerned about where the data resides okay this is because of uh, number 1 national security concerns some governments believe that storing data within their own borders you know will help protect it from foreign surveillance or cyber espionage this would help ensure that vital information related to government infrastructure or essential services is not easily accessible to potential adver- adversaries all right point number 2 uh, data protection and privacy storing data domestically allows countries to enforce their own data protection regulations more effectively this helps in ensuring that citizens personal information is handled according to local standards of privacy and security point number 3 economic interest by enforcing data localization laws countries can incentivize or force international companies to invest in local infrastructure such as data centers right this could lead to job creation and the development of a local uh, tech industry point number 4 a legal jurisdiction and control if data is stored within a country's borders it is easier for that country's government to access or control that data based on local laws and regulations right this could be for law enforcement purposes legal investigations or regulatory oversight next point number 5 cyber security and data breaches there is a belief that storing data locally might reduce the risk of data breaches especially if it's believed that foreign storage solutions are more vulnerable or if the data might pass through potentially unsecured networks right point number 6 reduced dependency by keeping data local countries uh by keeping data local countries can reduce their dependency on international tech companies and uh, foreign infrastructures right this can be particularly crucial in situations of uh, international conflicts uh, trade wars or geopolitical tensions next point number 7 uh, public perception and trust in the wake of uh, revelations about mass surveillance programs and uh, high profile data breaches there is a public demand in some regions for more robust data protections you know governments might respond with the data localization measures you know to restore trust point number 8 data sovereignty you know closely related to many of the reasons here uh, many nations believe that they have the sovereign right to legislate over data generated within their borders similar to how they would over uh, physical resor- resources so each country's concerns might be a mix of the reasons listed before they might have one reason or they have more than one or all of the reasons uh, listed listed before right and the weight they place on each reasons you know can vary significantly 
the decision to prioritize data residency is complex and rooted in a combination of political, economic, cultural, and technological factors. Next, there are key takeaways. Data sovereignty, concerned with who governs the data, right? Ensures data adheres to the laws and regulations of its home country, regardless of where the data is stored or processed. It deals with legal jurisdiction and compliance. And in the case of data localization, it emphasizes the physical storage of data, often implemented due to uh, concerns about data privacy, data security, and national control. Uh, this can impact multinational businesses, you know, by requiring them to maintain uh, local data centers. Now, the conclusion is, as the digital landscape, you know, continues to evolve, uh, the way nations handle and protect data becomes more crucial. Data sovereignty and uh, data localization are two strategies uh, that countries use to ensure their citizens' data is safeguarded and aligned with national interest. While these terms might seem you know, technical, uh, but they reflect broader concerns about privacy, security, and global collaboration in our interconnected world. With this, uh, thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for more relevant content on the privacy and uh, data protection topics. Bye-bye.